So we're recording this. Hopefully everyone's okay with that so that we can place this on the website and have it accessible to people who weren't able to be here tonight. So with that, I am Pam Keon. I'm a member of the steering committee of the Tamalpais Valley Energy Network. And I am so glad that you're all here this evening. We are a group of volunteers. Um, we operate on the neighbor helping neighbor um, concept. And we, one of the things that we do is we convene these little forums and we share information with one another to help us be stronger and more cohesive and with the end goal of being able to have a better outcome in um, challenging circumstances such as natural disasters. So this evening we're going to be talking about radio communication and um, before I introduce our wonderful presenters, David and Rob, I also want to mention <clears throat> a couple of you were talking about the heat. And just to make sure everyone knows that Mill Valley is opening a cooling center at the community center on Camino Alto tomorrow between one and seven o'clock. And so if you have any concerns, if you know of a neighbor who might have difficulty with the heat, maybe, um, is elderly or has difficulty moving around, please feel free to share that information so that we make sure that everybody um, is as comfortable as possible and safe as possible. So with that said, um, we're going to get into our topic for this evening. And we are really lucky because our presenters this evening are David Blaza and Rob Rollins, and they are both block captains. David is a um, block captain and also a member of the steering committee. He's a resident and block captain for the Pine Hill West, <clears throat> excuse me, NRG. Um, David is also a CERT, so put in a plug for CERTs um, now that the hybrid training is up and running. And David is a licensed radio operator. So welcome and thank you to David. And his partner in crime for this evening is Rob Rollins. And Rob is a retired electrical engineer. Um, he is in the Waterview Energy where he is also a block captain. And um, you may guess this, once he opens his mouth and starts speaking, Rob is originally from New Zealand. Um, the and... home of the America's Cup, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Rob has been a radio ham for almost 60 years, and he is active in the Marin County Sheriff Racy's organization. So they are going to be leading us through um, learning about radios, and I just before they start, my <clears throat> one more comment I wanted to make is that um, for a lot of the for a lot of us, this is not necessarily intuitive. And I'm so glad that everybody is here tonight because the more that we can um, familiarize ourselves with using these radios, and the more that we can practice, the stronger we're going to be, and the more likely we are to in a time of distress when we really need them, not panic, not forget everything we know, but say, okay, I remember this, push this button, do this, do that. So it's great you're all here. Um, and I am going to ask Rob and David to take it away. Great, thanks Pam. And can I just point out that the slides that we're using today are available on a Google slide link that I've put in the chat. So I've sent the Google slide link to everybody so if you want you can always just sing along on google slides or you can watch um, the presentation so it's up to you and while i'm doing it you'll notice in the chat that ted has um put in there that um our neighbor david schwartz has negotiated for us a 25 percent discount direct with midland on the radio so that information's in there as well jonathan schwartz yeah i wanted to give a shout out to jonathan for, for... That's uh, Jonathan. I'm so sorry. Jonathan, yes. Now, do you see it? Yeah, yeah just go, put it in. Just click present, present, Pam. Present. Yeah. yeah. There right. you go. Excellent. Thank you. So this is David Blaser talking. I'm the British one. Rob is the uh, New Zealander, the Kiwi on here. So um, 
you get a, an international crew tonight. And, and Jonathan, thank you so much for getting that des- discount from Midland. Uh, I don't know how you did it, or but um, it makes the radios uh, about sixty-five dollars a pair. So that uh, thank you for that. That was terrific. Um, okay, let's just go to the agenda slide, Pam. Next slide, please. So here's what we're going to talk about, just with the goals for what we're, why we're all on here tonight, uh, with some background and some context for how we're going to communicate. Um, and we're also going to talk about the radio issue. And anyway, that, sorry, Pam, you're skipping ahead. There you go. We're going to talk about the radios themselves, which Jonathan now has got us a deal on. Uh, if you want, you can use those or other radios. Talk about the channels, which is really, really important. There are only two channels you need to know about. Talk about your NRG. And then Rob's going to get into radio use and etiquette, and we're going to close with what the radios can and can't do. And then we'll get into questions because there've been a ton of questions. So Pam, can you go to the ne- next slide, please? Thanks. So the goal is to educate um, the com- our community here on um, block captains, but anybody who's interested in how to use a radio, these UHF radios, so that we can communicate if there is, a, is an emergency. And these radios are best used for local response to to a serious um, to a serious emergency. Um, yeah, Someone needs thing. to mute. Someone yeah. needs to mute. Please. Right. And so um, we'll talk a little bit about that. You may hear traffic from Mill Valley or Corte Madera or Sausalito, but we, we think we've got a, a plan in place. And some background and context is Town Valley, as you all know, is part of Marin County. We're not part of Mill Valley who has an emergency communication center of their own, our emergency communication center is in San Rafael. So um, uh, we, our communications link is, to, is up there. It's not to Mill Valley. I think that's an important point to make. And these radios for use in serious emergencies when cellular landline systems may be offline, you, you can't call 911 or 911 is overwhelmed or the uh, cell sites have gone down or landlines have gone down. And sort of our key emergency communication center, if, for want of a better word, really, is, is Southern Marin Fire Station 4. That's the fire station at Poplar and Shoreline. Uh, there's a Racy's radio in there. There's an emergency trailer with more radios and batteries in there. That is our an emergency supplies, by the way. So, you know, being county and being having to be self-sufficient, that's um, that really is our kind of nerve center. Is is the uh, is station for Poplar and Shoreline. So, Pam, you want to jump to the next one? Okay. So, so let's talk about the radios. So, right. um, any radio that is a GMRS radio can be used. There are also family radio service radios out there that may not necessarily have all the channels. In the early days of family radio service, there were a number of 14 channel radios out there. They were mostly pink and they were mostly bought for our daughters and granddaughters to, um, to play with. And while they look like toys, they are toys. So if you have an FRS radio, don't assume that that's gonna work. Some of the more recent FRS radios will work on all the channels, but don't count on it. Right. So this is one of uh, Dave, what David has here. Hold it up again, David is a, a current FRS radio, which has all the channels on. But um, if you want to just test them, you can just try and change the channels and see if you get 14 or 22. So we followed Central Marin's recommendation to use the Midland GXT 1000. It's about 70, 75 bucks a pair uh, for several reasons. Uh, they use AA batteries, and I'll talk about that in a minute. They are easy to use. They have the weather radio built in and they're widely available uh, from REI, Walmart. What, ha- what happened here? Yeah, okay. You can get them from Walmart or Amazon, or you can get, now get them direct from Midland, as you know, thanks to uh, Jonathan's efforts. One of the questions we had prior to this presentation related to the license, and you theoretically need to have a license to use the GMRS radios. A $35 license is, re- is required per family And I I stupidly bought a $70 license before they dropped the price. But anyway, um, uh, I bought it because I didn't want to be exposed because of my my business role. But um, in practice, there's no enforcement of the license. And it's up to you to decide. If you want to be a gorilla, like mostly I do, um, you'll never be be prosecuted, particularly for emergency use. But theoretically, in running a drill without a license, then you are in violation of the FCC rules. 
uh, the FCC's got better things to do than chase after us. So it's up to you. Next slide, please. Pam, you got to talk about this. Okay. So um, many of you who are on this this evening are energy block captains from Tam Valley, and many of you are not. You are residents of Tam Valley. And so we wanted to just give a few minutes to talk about the energy program. In Tam, Val in Tam Valley, we have 15 different energies. And you can find this if you go to this link. Um, it's also down here and learn all about the Tam Valley energy system. And you can um, look at the map and on, on the website, it's uh, interactive. So you can zoom in and you can get right down and see the street that you live on and see the parcel that is yours. And you can see it's color coded so that each NRG has its own color. Um, this NRG here is the Erica Chamberlain NRG. Um, Rob's NRG up here is Waterview. David's is here, the purple is Pine Hill West. And you will also see these stars that are on these um, in the NRGs. And those represent block captains that we have already enrolled. And we are always looking for more block captains, the more the better. We like to see our block captains work in teams. So if that's something you'd like to do, check in with us and find out if maybe there's already a block captain in your area or we can help you connect with someone. Um, we'll give you lots of support and like, would like to have you be part of the team. Each of these NRGs is assigned a channel on the radio. And so you only need to learn two channels. Um, you need to learn your own channel. And if you're a block captain, you will learn channel 16, which is the incident command. And David and Rob will talk more about that. So um, we'll go ahead. And Thank you, Pam. Rob. So one of the interesting things that comes out of experience with emergency radios is rechargeable batteries suck. Now think about hey, Rob, hold, hold on a sec. Pam, you skipped a slide. Sorry, Rob. That's okay. On, this is very, okay. very, very important. Uh, every, these are all the NRGs and the channel numbers. Um, since most of you have, G, ignore the GMRS only thing, but this is the, so when Pam said you need to know two channels, this is the first channel you need to know, is you need to know in your NRG, that channel, that should be the first channel that you, you have in your radio. So you can talk to your, within your NRG. The second is channel 16. That's, this is a very important slide. Without this, you, the radios don't do anything. You've got to know who, you, uh, you know, which channel to go to. So I have, so in my little FRS radio, I've got channel 19, because I'm in Pine Hill West, and I've got channel 16, because I'm a block captain. So I've only put two channels in it. So that way I don't get confused and I, you know, this, I know who I'm talking to. Um, and then channel 16 will be monitored by ham radio, uh, the operators, and you know, we'll talk about that. And ham radio operator, Rob, you want to, let me skip to you now. You, you hand over since you're our um, resident expert on everything amateur radio. So as we've already discussed, we do not have a direct contact between block captains and residents and the sheriff's EOC. There's obvious reasons for that. It doesn't scale. You can't have um, 200,000 people all trying to talk to the EOC at once. And obviously 911 is a, is a sort of an attempt to do that, but 911 overloads very quickly. So there's various degrees of um, cutting um, sort of striation as we go up through the process. And a lot of the problems that occur can be solved within a block. For instance, can someone help me get my garage door opener open. Those kinds of things don't need to go to the EOC. So the whole point of the FRS, of the GMRS radios is that you can resolve a lot of problems locally in your block. If the problem is outside your block, for instance, uh, the fact that Highway 1 is now totally jammed up by a fallen tree, that goes up into, on channel 16, to the local center. And the local emergency center here is uh, the fire station four at Poplar. And at that point, we will have 
ham radio operators like myself and various other people. I see Tim on here tonight. Um, David, if he hadn't bailed and moved to the far end of the county. <laughs> and um, the whole point of the RACES system is to be the last resort for transmitting emergency information up to the EOC. Fire Station 4 has access to something called Web EOC. Web EOC is a web-based uh, emergency operations center management utility and allows all the different centers that are county owned and maintained to report into the EOC, like fire stations, like um, sheriff's offices and stuff like that. So our, our role as amateur radio operators is to act if that system goes down. And that can, that can go down um, quite easily as we discovered during the PSPS back in October. Uh, also, the, there are CERT radios, although the CERT radios in Southern Marin are not really deployed. We found, how many did we find, Pam? A couple of dozen CERT radios um, with Southern Marin CERT on them. And, and nobody knows, first of all, who was supposed to use them and nobody knows who can use them today. So we're not actually using CERT radios in Tam Valley. I'm, I'm still correct on that, Anna, my Pam? That's okay. correct. We don't, okay. we don't have a plan for that at this time. Um, there was a question about why um, Tennessee Valley is, is low power. Channel 14, you, all these radios, you can choose to be high power or low power. And the reason why we said Tennessee Valley low power is because Tennessee Valley is quite closely um, integrated and you can get away with low power rather than high power. And you can change that in one of the multiple menus uh, under the main menu on, on the radio. But honestly, I don't think we need to go into that at this point. Just be aware that there's a way that you can reduce the power on your radio. Why would you do that? To minimize the amount of uh, interference you cause to other operators, other users in other parts of Southern Marin. Judith says that's what she wanted to know. Okay, next message. E EOC, Cynthia, Emergency Operations Center. The Emergency Operations Center is in the sheriff's office at Los Gamos in Terra Linda. You may have seen it's just off the west side of the freeway at Lucas. And um, the sheriff's EOC is, is the hub. That's where 911 is. That's where all the communications will be um, triaged between the county and the state. So the EOC at Sher uh, the sheriff's office is like other sheriff's offices in San Francisco and so on, uh, connected into the EOC in Sacramento. Does that address your question? Okay, next slide, Pam, I think. So back to batteries. Um, it's been shown in emergency services that rechargeable batteries suck. The reason for that is once you, you evacuate, you hop in your car and you drive off down the hill and you, um, you get stuck in traffic on um, shoreline for four hours, your battery, your rechargeable battery runs out. How are you gonna recharge your rechargeable battery in your radio when you're in your car? Unless you're like me, you won't have any way of doing that. And also the charger that comes with these radios is very unsuitable for portable operation. Most fire stations have a whole load of Energizer uh, AA batteries. David, how many have you got? Yeah, we, we in the emergency trailer, we put about 150 AA batteries in the emergency trailer at uh, station four. So uh, uh, hopefully it'll keep us going for a few days if people need batteries. Now, the, the other issue that, about this, which Pam reminded me of tonight, is that if you put AA batteries in your radio and then plug it back into the charger, you may have a call to the fire brigade sooner than you might have otherwise expected. And there was an, an instance of uh, a radio and its charger melting down somewhere in Tam Valley, I think it was, or was it somewhere else? It was in Tam Valley. <laughs> in Tam Valley. So, yeah. so it, it's a little bit complicated. Take your batteries out. You should always take batteries out of anything that's battery powered anyway, because the batteries eventually leak and destroy it. So, so it, it's sort of suboptimal that you have to pull your radio apart. And you can probably do it in the car as, as you're stuck on shoreline. You can pull out your emergency AA batteries and use them to replace the rechargeable battery that's normally in your radio. So that's just a little wrinkle in the whole process. But um, a lot of experience has proven that the, the AA batteries are key to keeping radios alive. Next slide, please. So there's only two things you ordinarily need to do to your radio. 
The first one is enter your channel, which in my case is channel 20, or listen to weather radio. So to enter your channel, you turn the volume knob clockwise, click, radio comes on, and hey ho, nothing much happens. If you want to change channels, you press, Pam, you can use your mouse, you press the menu button and it will start flashing. Then you use the up and down keys, those two keys there, to go up and down until you choose your channel. Now, at this point, this is really important. Don't hit the menu button again. If you hit the menu button again, you go into the weeds. And there's about five or six or even seven layers of menus in there that will get you horribly lost. And I don't want you to suddenly find your radio doesn't work when you go to use it. So it's really important to realize that when you put your channel in, do not hit the menu button again. Just wait for it to time out and the, the 20 or whatever number it is will just flash. Then to assume, to make sure you don't screw up again, um, hold the lock key down. You hold it down until the lock symbol appears on the screen. And then no matter what you do with your dog jumps on your radio or whatever, it will stay on that channel and it won't screw up. Now, the other thing is these radios also pick up the NOAA weather radio channels. Why do you care about the weather? Well, you may not. Uh, tomorrow you probably will. But uh, in general, the weather is not the first thing you care about. But the, the NOAA channels, there are 10 NOAA channels that are uh, provided all around the country to, and those, country, those channels are reused as you move around the country. So like one we have here is on, um, in Monterey, it broadcasts in Monterey and it transmits from somewhere in San Francisco. There's another one just north of here somewhere. You, you're always, uh, if you're in any kind of settled area, you'll be within reach of a weather radio channel. So to access the weather radio channel, you hold down the menu button, Pam, if you could do the, uh, the yep, hold that down. Uh, it, and I'm sorry, I don't have the video there, but it will it'll start flashing. And then you can uh, decide what channel you want to listen to. It will usually choose the, the strongest channel it can find. And it will stay on the weather channel until such time as you press the push to talk button. And Jonathan's pointed out you need to unlock first. Thank you. That, that's item one. So if the radio has been locked previously, um, see, I got there at number one, but I just forgot to talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. So um, if you, um, you need to unlock first, obviously, before you, you go to the weather, weather channel. The, the NOAA weather channels will generally carry emergency information about fires, about earthquakes, tsunamis, and so on. So basically, NOAA contracts with FEMA to broadcast that information on, in emergency situations. So that's all you need to do for the basic radio operation. Now, changing to high power and low power is an option you may want to get into, but don't sweat it. That's not the point. At the moment, don't be scared of the radio. Just know how to do the basic stuff. Next slide, please, Pam. Before you go on, Rob, can you just review where is the lock button again, please? The red arrow or the blue arrow on the back. So on the left, it's the blue arrow. On the right, it's the red arrow. OK. You just hold it down, and it will lock the keyboard. OK, it's really important to realize only pers one person can talk at a time on a channel. And this is the most important thing you need to know. Don't just pick up the radio and start talking because someone else might be on there with some life-threatening emergency that they're transacting with other people. And just be courteous. Don't press the button until you've listened. Also, if you listen long enough, you may find the issue you're about to present to the world at large is already under discussion by somebody else. For instance, there's a, there's a fire down on shoreline. A hundred people may have already reported that. So having you or me up here on board of you saying there's a, a, there's a fire on shoreline is, is really worthless information. So listen first, make sure your issue isn't already being addressed by the people on the radio. To talk, you hold down the button on the side of the radio called the push to talk button. And it's not a toggle. You have to hold it down to talk. And when you release it, you release it when you're finished. There's no need to say over, although a lot of people do. Uh, the, these radios usually beep at the end of your transmission. So it's obvious that you've finished. 
It's really important to understand these are not cell phones. You can't talk and listen at the same time. So it's excellent for talking to your in-laws. So your in-laws can't interrupt you when they're uh, saying something that they don't want to hear. So, <laughs> although I don't recommend you use FRS radio, um, GMRS radios to talk to your family. Some people will say Roger to acknowledge something. For instance, um, David and I are going to have a little chat now. And um, David and I are going to talk on channel 16. David, have you seen the fire that's occurring down on Shoreline? This is 1209 Waterview. Yeah, Rob, a firm. I see the fire on Shoreline. Okay, the first thing I did wrong there was I used the name David. I should have identified myself, identified myself as 1209 Waterview. The fact that my name is Rob is irrelevant. The most important thing is that I'm on 1209 Waterview, so people who are listening can determine where the issue is. So it's okay to use names, I guess, but try, try and be helpful in your transmission so that other people can work out at what area it is you're talking about. Great. Let's go back up again. Um, identify yourself by your street number. You may have an FCC call sign. If you, if you go through the FCC process, pay your 35 bucks, you end up with an incomparable, incomprehensible call sign that I can't even remember my FCC call sign. And um, if you use it, you'll just confuse the hell out of everybody. The most relevant information is where you are, in my opinion. Now, other people have different views, and we, we work with the other NRGs across Marin County to see what their process is. Some people tend to use block names and so on, or block numbers. The problem is, who can remember what their block number is three months after the training? So I, I favor using as complete geographic information as you can. The PTT doesn't mean push to, push to think. So know what it is you want to say first before you start talking. Try and get your thoughts in some kind of cogent form. And um, let's do an example here. Uh, 445 Wellesley. I see there's a fire broken out on the top of the ridge over the, over the I can't, I'm not finding the right name, but anyway, there's a fire broken out on the ridge opposite you. Are you seeing that? Go ahead. It's 435 Wellesley Avenue. Yes, I'm seeing the fire. Affirmative. So what did I do wrong then? I forgot to identify myself. <laughs> so so, so we, we all screw up. Uh, keep communication short and be patient. Other users may be using the channel. Their, their use may be more important than the fact your cat has gone up the tree to escape the fire. And emergency communications are always going to be chaotic. So it helps to be calm and brief. The Radio Ham community in Marin County has put together a YouTube video starring certainly certain famous people. Uh, put together by another famous person called Brian Cooley, who I think a lot of people have heard of. Brian's like Mr. Media of Marin, Mr. Marin, Marin Media. He's just put out a big um, media release about the, um, the wild, wildlife, um, what's, the wildlife, what's it called? The, um, I've forgotten the name of the Marin Wildlife Organization. Anyway, so Brian Cooley, great me media guy, and he helped us put together this video. All right, next next one. No, not wild care. Um, humane society, humane society. Thank you. We're in humane, yeah. Okay, so what, what I wanted to do here was just say what the radios can and can't do. These radios are primarily to talk from within your NRG because that's where, if there's something bad happens, it's going to be neighbor helping neighbor. It really is going to be, you know, can this person evacuate? What, you know, this building, you know, something has been an earthquake and where is so and so? I think it, it's really going to happen within your NRG. And that's what the radio, the primary, primary use of these radios is to communicate within your NRG because the range will be fine. The, um, and if you switch, if you, you number, if the first channel, as you switch it on, the first channel that comes up, if that's your NRG, that's the best way because you just turn it on and you can talk. And I think that is for everybody to understand. That is probably for that, for that help at the first point of contact of whatever happens. That's probably the most important thing that we can educate you on tonight is that's what these are really for. 
Secondary, we'll be talking to the other NRGs. In actual fact, Rob and I, when we were doing our hopeless demo there, which Rob and I should have rehearsed, uh, <laughs> that Rob is in uh, the Waterview NRG. I'm in the Pine Hill West NRG. Two different NRGs, we were talking to each other. So we, we showed, like, we did a live demo, which as we all know, never really works out, but we, we tried, but it, wor it worked. But the point is, it's gonna be within communications within your NRG, which is these are really gonna be useful for. Now, what the radios can't do, as Rob pointed out earlier, it can't connect you with the County Emergency um, Operations Center or Southern Marine Fire or Gavin Newsom or anybody else. It really, that's gonna be handled by other people because of, as Rob pointed out, the, it just simply can't handle the traffic. And so, you know, Marin races, that's why I know there are a few uh, amateur radio operators here on the, on the call tonight. That's where having the Marin races frequencies uh, really help out and uh, or going down somebody who's close to station four could use that, that radio that's uh, they have a, 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 a races radio a, a desktop unit right there in the in the in the firehouse so that's and kind of our drills regularly with the fire stations for instance I'm organizing a drill on Saturday in West Marin that's going to be based in fire stations around West Marin so races tries to keep up to, up to date with right. technology and also more importantly with the community it serves. Sorry to right. interrupt David. Right, no, that's good Rob. That's good for you, people to know that you're around. Okay, that's, and then next slide Pam, I think that was um, everything it. we wanted. So we tried to get through this quickly, make it simple. You know, I try to keep it simple, like two frequencies you need to know. Your NRG frequency is the most important. Make that the first frequency on your radio. Then you can talk to people in your NRG, because I think that's where that first level response and aid is going to come from, you know, and take neighbor taking care of neighbor. I think that's what this is all about. So with that being said, um, let's throw out questions. So uh, Veronica, so... Um, that your first question was about how would you contact uh, Southern Marine Fire? Um, if it's a normal time, you would dial 911 in that situation, right? If it's just, if, if I look out the window and I see my neighbor's house on fire, you dial 911. The, these radios are really meant to be used in a widespread emergency, right? Um, so I think that might be the answer. You're not gonna get through to Southern Marine Fire on these radios, so. Um, that, well, that's I guess not my, my question, yes, I understand that, like, obviously, you know, there's a fire call 911, but if we have some sort of emergency, whether it's an earthquake or satellites are down, my landline is down, my mobile is down, how do I contact the fire department? Do I get within the NRG channel and ask somebody to do it who can, or? For, here's what, in this scenario, you would first go on to the first NRG channel, which Veronica, you're a neighbor of mine, it will be channel 19 That's to try right. to find, and then is anybody in contact with races or can contact the EOC? If not, you would flip to channel 16 to try to get hold of Rob or one of the other am amateurs like that. But in a situation like that, if one house is on fire, many may be on fire, but I think that's the way to do it. See if there's anybody within your frequency on channel 19 in our case, right? Who, who can communicate outside of the NRG. Or the second one go to 16 and see if there's somebody on there who can report it, or they may have already reported it to Rob's point earlier on. Got it, thank you. Uh, Jonathan's having problems with his radio. <laughs> <laughs> I, think he's, I, I think he got the right advice. Yes, exactly, all right. <laughs> okay, from <laughs> Ted. Thank you, Ted. All right, okay. So any more questions? We did have questions popping up earlier, but hopefully maybe we've answered most of your questions. So um, the slides are on the chat. Um, so everyone should have a copy of the link to the slides. And I've also put in a link to the YouTube video that I referred to. So um, when you get bored tonight and you've, uh, you've uh, popped the, the scotch open, um, have a look at the YouTube and laugh. I was also gonna add to the Veronica to your question about the house is on fire, the, the lines or landline is down, cell service is not working. Um, as David mentioned, it's most likely there's a lot going on besides one house on fire under those circumstances. And um, in a large scale disaster, one of the things that happens right away is the fire department starts, they go out and they start doing a reconnaissance. 
So they are actually out there looking for the fires and they are looking for the highest priority problems. So that's another set of eyes that most of us don't realize are on us as well. Um, and the other thing I wanted to add is that hopefully you have a block captain. And, um, and if you don't, let's, let's get somebody to volunteer to be a block captain. Um, because that's another person that you can use to help you get that information out because the block captain has a direct way to get straight to incident command. Can I address Ben's question? Um, you want me to explain some TLAs and FLAs? <laughs> so which ones did I not explain? EOC, I think I've, I've explained, Emergency Operations Center. Yeah, I, actually, I, I think it just occasionally, as, a, as a, someone who's done a lot of rescues, but more in a wilderness setting, I'm very interested mm -hmm. in learning. But uh, it's helpful to occasionally just say the full name rather than just sure. the TLAs and FLAs, because sure. after a while, it becomes an alphabet soup that's a problem for any organization trying to expand its base. So I think it's, it's helpful for me and maybe others that don't remember all the acronyms. That, so that, uh, are there any that I could explain now, Ben? Um, uh, I think maybe just going forward, like Bracey's, I don't remember. Uh, but going forward, if you occasionally just use the full name, like a three-letter acronym, rather than just TLA or FLA, because people have right. a hard, like me, have a hard time, you know, learning it if I just hear it once. <clears throat> so Ra Racy's thank you very much. Radio Amateur Communications Emergency Service. Uh, okay. Or, or Civil Emergency Service, sorry. Okay. And the GMST is? G GMRS is the General GMRS. Mobile Radio System. That's an FCC uh, FLA. So we can blame okay. them for that one. <laughs> okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Any others? No, that's it for now. But when yeah, other ones come up, it's helpful just to hear the full name rather than just the acronym without an explanation. Several people have asked for the link to the slides. Ted, did you find them? I put them back in again. So they, Did they are, pop off? They are right okay. after Jonathan's okay. question. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan, you had a question about uh, the two your two channels. I would leave it in your primary channel first, because that's where you're going to hear the, you know, what's happening in your NRG. I'm not sure if you put it in scan and there's a lot going on, you'll be picking up a lot mm -hmm. of of just just humans can only listen to one thing at a time. Um, so I would just leave it in your NRG unless you really need to talk on 16. I, I, if you've ever been on, you know, radios where there's all, scanning a lot of channels, it'll, I mean, it'll drive you bananas. And I, I think the, the, the rule is if something's going on, you feel an earthquake, put your radio on. <clears throat> don't, don't leave it on all the time. Richard? A question concerning the uh, the... CERT radios, which apparently are not activated for TAM Valley. So Correct. my understanding would be that this radio is totally independent of any CERT communications and is limited to our NRG operation here locally. Is that correct? Well, you're half right. Um, there's no connection between these GMRS radios and the CERT radios. The CERT radios are specially licensed high band radios. Um, however, other people other than us use GMRS radios, and I used the example earlier of the NRG in Corte Madera. And when we did a drill on the same day as Corte Madera, we realized why we could not use channel 15, because that was their command channel. So we got a lot of interference from them. So um, GMRS radios are used by a lot of different people. If you go into REI to buy your radio, you'll probably find the person who helps you has a radio on his or her hip that they use to talk to the front desk. So GMRS radios are being used all, in all sorts of places. And for that reason, you're going to get a, hear a lot of crap on the, on the radios. That's why you don't want to leave them on all the time. Right, David? Because right. you, don't, you don't want to hear some, some guy say, Bringing me, bring me another bicycle for the back, please. We've got a customer here. So you've really got to be careful that you don't get swamped by all the, all the garbage that's out there. And then you get the kids, and then, then you get the abusers as well. And some of the channels have got some quite abusive material on, so keep your little, little ease away from the radio. I want to bring up, I don't think Martha is, oh, there's Martha. Martha is still on, and she um, put something great in the chat. She made a recommendation, and I wanted to follow up on it. Um, and Martha, I'm, 
Okay, Martha said, suggest we all put printed instructions on how to use the radio with the radio, and, um, and which is a great recommendation. And we actually talked about, and you all might wanna do this yourselves, actually putting your instructions on an adhesive strip and putting the strip right on your radio. Um, so it's not even that you have the manual and it's in a Ziploc bag with your radio, but you've got it right on it. So if you leave the house, you don't have to carry the whole manual with you. You've got the instructions right on the back of your radio. And there's only two things you know how, need to know how to do, as I've tried to explain. So you could just print that one slide. Mm -hmm. And I've, uh, just by the way, uh, various people seem to be having trouble getting the links. We've put them up multiple times. I know. It's weird. Ganila, are you still having problems? No, I found one link. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you, you're welcome to open up the link and print out any or, you know, any or all of this presentation today. Yeah, if, if I will. Can. And we will also post that on the um, Tan Valley Energy website in the next couple of days. So you can go there to get the slides as well. So we have a, um, Claudia asks who she contacts to get the Midland discount. And um, that information is- Can I, it's Jonathan, can I jump in? Yeah, Jonathan, sure, go right please. ahead. And, and Hi, again, I, thank I, you so much for- Well, wait, you, before you, you go there, <laughs> I, I, I didn't test the code until just now. And it turns out when you go to the Midland site, you do in fact get 25% off, but it's, it's versus their retail price of, 80, of $89 plus tax plus $22 for shipping, oh. adding up to $95. So oh, REI. You can go to REI for 70 and uh, Amazon for, for 69. So, so I didn't do so, so just such a good job after all. <laughs> Uh, shoot. Well, so thank you very REI much. REI is a great deal, um, and they even, you even get ten percent back if you're a member, um, and they guarantee their stuff. And I would suggest that just as a local or Amazon. So there you go. Uh, I also just want to mention uh, that Best Buy has them as well, and they're seventy six dollars and free pickup in San Rafael. Okay. Nice. There you great. go. You had a couple. Uh, Questions be be before today about using other radios. CB radios are not compatible with GMRS. GMRS is a UHF uh, band um, around 450 megahertz, just above the ham band, and um, CB radios are at 27 megahertz. So it's uh, it's chalk and cheese, and there's no compatibility between the, the two systems. Okay, so I guess what we could wrap up, and then uh, at some point we should have a drill, a radio drill, when we. Uh... Yeah, how much interest is there in getting out in the field and having a drill? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we'd like to try and do that um, in the near future, and you know, just go out on a Saturday morning and um, and try it out. And in the meantime, um, particularly for those of you who are block captains and have a co-block captain. You know, there's no reason you can't go out tomorrow night and go to two ends of your street and practice. So up on Waterview, we've got a semi-official protocol, which is basically to use one of these uh, air horns that you can buy from West Marine for 10 bucks, and then make an ear splitting noise. And the idea is that if there's anything going on, you go out onto your deck and blow the air horn, and um, everybody then goes to their radio, turns it on to find out what all that's about. I like that, I like that. The only problem, Jonathan, is the air horns don't actually travel that well amongst our topography. And of course, people who are inside with their um, ranch lighters closed, especially in the winter, aren't gonna hear. So it's not a great idea, but you know, the more ide ideas you've got, the more chance you've got of alerting people. So the air horns are 9.95 at West Marin. You, uh, you can just go down to, um, to Marin City and uh, you can buy one there and you can annoy your dog or, or your neighbors or your spouse, depending on your inclination. My 11 year old son, I'm sure would love to be in charge of the air horn. Oh no, no, don't, don't let him start. <laughs> <laughs>
that they're used by sail sailors to uh, indicate when people have screwed up by going around a mark and they have to take a penalty or something. So the air horn is basically an announcement to the sailors that they've, they've got a problem, they've got to do something. So um, Lee also put something in the chat that I just wanted to point to. She says, Tam Valley Energy are your neighbors. We're all volunteers. Your neighbors with no budget or marketing department. If you're not a block, a block captain and you're on this call, please let us know how you found out about it. We're trying to reach out to all of Tamalpais Valley and we're trying to recruit block captains and spread the word about NRG block captains and using emergency radio use. And Lee says, I am a block captain and 62. If I can be a block captain, you can too. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. Please spread the word. So. Quite poetic, really. Yes, yeah. yes. All right. Well, all thank right. you all so much for coming. And again, thank you so much to David and to Rob, who have been just such incredible resources to us and um, for giving so generously of their time to their neighbors. We really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, anything comes up later, feel free to contact us. Um, you know our website, we put our um, address in the chat as well, our email address, and it's on all the slides. So uh, you should have no problem finding one of us. All right. Can I just um, answer yeah. Jonathan's question? Yeah, um, sorry. So, so Jonathan's saying, why don't we use SMS as a replacement for air horns? Well, I'd say as an adjunct. Uh, SMS messaging, of course, works as long as you've got a network. Uh, as you saw in the PSPS 18 months ago, we lost our network or a lot of us lost our yeah, network. Yeah. Right. And one of the big things that I'm telling people is get an alternate carrier. If you go, if you go down to Best Buy or um, even your local drugstore, you can buy a $20 phone that you can turn on for $7 a month on a different carrier. So if you're currently on Verizon, go and buy a burner phone for um, 20 bucks and put a $7 a month uh, some diversity on your cell phone carrier. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Well, thank yeah. you so much, everyone. Thank you. Take care, be safe, and stay cool. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Rob, 